Thank you very much. So thank you for inviting us as an Alliance project. You just join. Uh, maybe you can put the PowerPoint on. So it's the it's a foresight project to support food system transformation through agroecology. So it has three components. One is a global component, which I will focus on. And there are two pilot studies, one on in India and one in Senegal. Uh, what about, it's a FAO-led project with German fun funding and CIHAD is the scientific partner. It started in 2022 and it will go on in 2023. First thing for you who are in agroecology, you might not be very, all very familiar with what foresight is. So I think I would, I would just give a little overview of that. Foresight is not about projection. You talked about projection earlier. Foresight is about envisaging several futures, possible futures. So it's not, Im it's imagining it, creating them. So it's being proactive so that the future will not be the business as usual one or just a vision. It will be something where you will identify what are the levers uh, that will could make transitions and then transformation. So it's really anticipating one or several futures. And it's doing that with a lot, you know, a lot of people in order to have debates and to make sure that people are intellectually and emotionally involved in the process and they appropriate the process. And that, that if they are, if this process is appropriated, stakeholders it will, lead, it will lead to action. So it's really two, three things, anticipation, appropriation, in order to get to action. And so it's about anticipating one, but also several futures, as we will show. So the project, the idea is with foresight, it's often there to help policy making or strategy making. It can be done at different levels that we will show. And it's make sure that policymakers make real transformative decisions and they're not presented only with the business as usual position, or only an, an alternative one. Uh, the project there had three, two components, as I said, a global component, which was a global review of foresight processes that have taken place in the last six, six to eight years, and that were dealt with the transformation of food system. And we chose those on the transformation of food system, which had a, an assumption about agroecology. And then the other two, the other two pilot studies, one in Andhra Pradesh with uh, Agribium uh, model, which is both interaction between modeling and narratives. And another one in Senegal, also with interactions between modeling and, and and uh, narratives. So let me go a bit forward. The first, our first result was to create a corpus of 16 foresight studies that took place in the past and that at least one scenario with agroecology. So that's, these are the ones we, we chose. We didn't choose, I mean, there, there are more foresight studies we, we could have chosen because, because of the limited time we chose only these ones, and we try to have foresight studies that were done at global level, at regional level, large regions, national level, territorial level, and even farm level. So for example, uh, long food movement, uh, future of small scale agriculture, agrimond, agrimond terra, these are global level with also regional components. Uh, the prospect agrimond terra, was used, done in Tunisia, so that was done at national level. Uh, and then there were some at territorial level in Senegal uh, with fatigue and the Niay, and then one at farm level uh, in Burkina Faso on the supporting better crop livestock integration on small scale farm. So really a large variety of foresight processes that were all analyzed in order to compare them and to try to learn from that how it can be improved. And then we had a global workshop with all the authors 
of these foresight studies and some people from the agroecology community. So Fergus was there, or at least online. <laughs> Pablo Titonel, Molly Anderson was there. So there were quite a few, Colin Anderson, quite a few representatives of the foresight community. Uh, what were the, some of the results? I'm, I won't go through all of them. Uh, first of all, that when there are, in these foresight studies, some have only one scenario, which is really to show, like TIFA, which is on agroecology for Europe, which wants to show that it is possible to feed, feed Europe and with, one, with the agroecology scenarios. Others have, have two scenarios, usually a business as usual, and an agroecology scenario. Others have three, four, even nine scenarios. Out of these, when there are several of them, for example, in Agrimont Terra, we have, we have five scenarios and four scenarios which have agroecological assumptions. So it means there is not only one scenario with agroecology, but four scenarios, which can, so it shows there are different pathways and there's only one pathway to go through agroecology. And I think that's a very important message of these foresight studies, that it shouldn't, we shouldn't focus on only one pathway, but really open the possibility of getting agroecology true. Um, how, what, what we tried to, because we had these people from the foresight community and agroecology community, I'll try to show about a little bit the, the linkages. This is how the future of agri-food system is represented in the recent FAO report. Um, so it's really the food system, which is rather complex, but it's a foresight report. So this is kind of how the foresight people see uh, agri-food systems. So let's try to see how we can link it with how the agroecology people see that. Um, the first thing is that we see we will see that there's a need to connect the two communities. If we want the foresight community to progress in integrating agroecology, and if we want to, the agroecology community to progress by envisaging several futures with, with uh, agroecology, not only one. When you look at drivers and principle, you see that the drivers and principle that the, the foresight community used to look at the transformation of food system, quite a few of them are also uh, uh, have linkages with the HAP, the 13 principles, but they're not quite the same. And it's different. <laughs> These differences are very interesting. For example, uh, the, the, the foresight community will talk about as a driver, the scarcity of natural resources. And the, the agroecology community will talk about land and natural resources governance. The foresight community will talk about economic growth and the agroecology community talks about economic diversification. Uh, the, the, the foresight community talks about inequalities whereas the, the agroecology community talks about fairness. So there's definitely a need for dialogue between these two communities if they are to understand each other uh, and, and really progress together. Also, it's interesting to see that the agro there are some drivers for the transformation of, of food systems that the agroecological community doesn't look at, at all upon, which are the ones which are surrounded by the cir green circle there. Second point, there are some blind spots which are totally, uh, I mean, that not, neither communities looked at. These blind spots are what's between production and consumption, which is all the storing, processing, retaining, disposing. This neither community looked, looks at that or doesn't look at it very carefully. I mean, it's not, it's a, it's a bit, you talk about the missing middle, the blind spots. I mean, the, and also in the questions which are asked, the foresight community ask a lot of questions about food security, land use, but it doesn't look at all at wages and profit, doesn't look so much at social well-being, social stability. So they're really 
topics that are not looked upon and that are important. Third, there are questions of geographical scales, which are important for the two communities, but may, may not always looked upon in the same way. There's this missing middle and the, and the meso level, which is also often missing. The models, the Forsyth communities uses the same models to, to sim, stim, simulate the futures of conventional agriculture and the future of agroecology. And whereas the metrics are very different, the crops are very different. So there's a real need for the society community to improve its model if it wants to, to model agroecology. The participation of stakeholders in the, uh, is important for foresight, but very often it, policymakers are not included in the whole processes. And so, but whereas it is the policymakers who make the decisions. So if they're not included in the foresight process, they cannot appropriate the discussions, and there are different postures. So the main recommendations are really that the transformation of agri food system through agroecology is a political question, and it requires important investment. The question was raised the other day is, how did the green revolution came upon, and why doesn't agroecology do come true? And there were apparently two, two to point to that were raised. One is that with, with the Green Revolution, there were mass, massive investments. And so it, it went through very quickly. And, and it had, it was, um, yeah, and that does not happen for agroecology, which is still a niche in many, in many of our organizations. And it's still a niche in research. So uh, if we want to have, um, to help that the fact that foresight helps agroecological transition, there should be foresight should be led by the by representatives of the two communities, and the the linkages for the moment are quite insufficient. We should involve a variety of actors and at policymakers. We should look at the whole food system, and not only some of its components, as we've seen. We should consider the rapidity and radicality of adoption of innovations in the past. And we tend to forget that these may be as rapid in the future, uh, but there are also inertia, inertia in innovation, but the inertia in governance, inertia in different things. But we shouldn't, we tend to forget that innovations can be very rapid also in the future. Also, we should have appealing narratives. Foresight people tend to think that models uh, are enough, and if you show figures to policymakers that agroecology is uh, is very efficient, they will vote for agroecology. But that's not enough, and that that came out during the workshop. Appealing appealing narratives are very important, and these narratives, when they are developed, they should be developed in interactions with with the people and with the modeling, and not separately. And then we should create new models to integrate larger number of crops that are used in agroecology, new practices and principles. Uh, what are our projects for 2023? We're going to be writing a report on the workshop and our results that will come out soon and that will be sent first to all the people who have attended the workshop. Then we'll have an article. We'll have knowledge exchange we started already this knowledge exchange among the foresight processes at different scales because there were people from Europe, Africa, Latin America, and representative of Asia at the workshop. And we would, we would propose to organize a foresight workshop with some agroecology practitioners and with some foresight practitioners so that also agroecology practitioners understand better what is foresight and foresight people better understand better agroecology. The Andhra Pradesh and the Senegalese pilot projects will continue and uh, with policy, uh, policy dialogues in Andhra Pradesh and dissemination of results in uh, Senegal. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to present this work. So for just to say, tell you who is involved in these processes at FAO, it's Anne-Sophie Poisson and Jimena Gomez, who are leading the project. 
uh, for the state of the art, it was Fatma Hostum and myself, and Bruno Dorin for India, and Rémi Prudhomme from Syrah, for Senegal. Thank you. <laughs>